Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday morning vlog. We are not in Las Vegas. We are in Buena Park, California at the wonderful Knott's Berry Farm. Not going to lie, it's a little bit hot here and also a lot more humid than Las Vegas. Big hair. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of sweating going on. Anyway, we came to Knott's Berry Farm for Halloween and uh, we had a great time. It was last night, Taste of Halloween, and we can't wait to share all the footage and fun with you. Yeah, we uh, did a little bit of a, a, a vacation just for us in California, which we didn't film, but we did come here to Halloween, and uh, we're going to show you some of the history of Knott's Berry Farm and also some of the attractions here that they're doing for this particular event. And we even did a mini room tour. That's right. Because <laughs> we stayed here on property. All right, this adventure starts right now. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Any road trip can be an adventure, and the getting there is as much fun as the destination. California, here I come, right back where I started from. Although I never started there. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Anyway, we just passed Mandalay Bay. We're on the outskirts of the Strip, heading west. We left Las Vegas on a Thursday afternoon with the plan to go halfway and spend the night in Barstow. Our first stop across the California line was this tiny travel mecca, Baker. Baker is known as the gateway to Death Valley, and it's a great spot for gas, food, and the world's tallest thermometer. This epic thermometer was built by Willis Heron, owner of the Bun Boy restaurant. He commissioned the Young Electric Sign Company of Las Vegas to build it out of concrete at a total cost of a whopping $750,000. He turned it on in 1992, and it displays the temperature in one of the hottest places on Earth for all to see. The mid-October day we were there, it was 99 degrees. We spent our first night in Barstow, California, and we just have to show you this room. We stayed at the Hampton near the Outlet Mall, and we were upgraded to their best suite. We had an east-facing desert view, and wow, can I just say we did not want to leave this room. It was terrific. The Hampton Inn and Suites Barstow has four of these rooms, the King Bed Studio Suite. It's got a whirlpool bath, desk and free Wi-Fi, and lots of charging ports. There's a nice spacious seating area, and out of sight around the corner is a kitchen area with a fridge and microwave. Out that far door is a private terrace to sit and admire the view. We just arrived in Barstow, and we actually found a little sports bar. We're going to have some dinner. Dale's going to get a tall beer. We are halfway there. Day two, and we're off to the California coast. Many people think California is all Tinseltown and orange groves, but in fact, a whole lot of it is desert similar to Nevada. It's a long way west before you get past those mountains and the coastal paradise on the other side. We really like to avoid the cities when we travel in California, and when you go the less traveled route, you get to stop at cool roadside attractions like this one. Charlie Brown Farms in the little town of Little Rock. This place is six acres of fun, and you would not believe the variety of stuff inside this huge building. Seriously, we could do a whole vlog on just this place alone. So let me tell you, if you ever find yourself on the Pear Blossom Highway, take a couple minutes and check out Charlie Brown Farms. You won't be disappointed. Eventually, we couldn't go any further west and found ourselves on Highway 1 at the ocean. We always marvel at the bounty of California. Let's face it, their produce feeds us all. We had to stop at Vintage Grocers in Malibu just to appreciate the gorgeous organic local produce on display there. I wish we had a grocery store like this in Las Vegas, and just let me say we love that pumpkin display out front. The Pacific was gorgeous on this afternoon, and we did a bit of filming and took a few photos at the beach. 
We wrapped up our day in a really nice Hyatt hotel that had an outdoor display that reminded us of the light show at the wind. Okay, we have arrived at our goal, Buena Park, the home of Knott's Berry Farm. But what actually is Knott's Berry Farm? You know how much we love Las Vegas history, and truth is, we just love history, period. We had to take a minute to learn the history of this success story. Walter Knott was a farmer. Back in 1920, 100 years ago, Walter and his wife Cordelia moved their family to Buena Park and began growing berries. They ran a berry stand and Mrs. Knott had a tea room next door. Fast forward to the mid-1930s and a new variety of berry developed by Rudolph Boysen. It was a sweet tart mix of raspberry, blackberry, and loganberry and Walter Knott saw something special. He named it boysenberry and began to cultivate and market it. The berry stand grew in popularity, as did the tea room, and Cordelia started serving her homemade chicken dinners on her wedding china. By the 1940s, the line to eat on Sundays was six hours long, and Walter had an idea. He started building a ghost town to entertain the folks while they waited. He chose a pioneer theme because he wanted to honor the pioneer spirit that built America. By the 1960s, the park had grown so much that they had to put a fence around it, and it became America's very first theme park. More history to come as we explore Knott's Berry Farm 2020. We had booked ourselves a room at the Knott's Hotel right on the property, so let's go check it out. This hotel has 320 rooms, and it's ideal for guests going to Knott's Berry Farm. In fact, they have room and ticket packages as well. There is a Camp Snoopy wing that features peanuts decor, and if you have a large group, you can connect up to three rooms for your party. In the lobby area is the on-site restaurant Amber Waves. These days, it's only open for breakfast with outside seating. We didn't get to try it out, but it really looks great. Our room was the single king, 300 square feet in size. It was simple and basic, no frills, but the bed was comfy, the towels were plush, and the AC worked great. All the right perks when you've been walking the park for hours. Plus, everything in this hotel was very, very clean. There's an outdoor pool at the hotel with entry by appointment only and across the way, a fabulous little tennis court. All right, enough with the anticipation. It's now time to head over to the park and the taste of Halloween event. Doors open at three and lucky for us, it's just across the hotel parking lot. This area is called California Marketplace, and it is a really appealing covered walkway with cute shops on your left and a big spacious picnic area on your right. The Marketplace grew up around the Chicken Dinner Restaurant. It was the first shopping mall to be located outside of a theme park, and this was back in the 1950s. First up is the Emporium, a beautiful gift shop. Paula was snapping pictures like crazy, and if we hadn't been filming, she would have been buying, that is for sure. The best things in this shop were the two villages on display. This one is Halloween themed.
and this one is Christmas. We'll take one of everything, please. Thank you very much. Next door is the candy parlor. Everything for your sweet tooth. Beyond that is the berry market, where Knott's Famous boysenberry products are for sale. Everything from jam to coffee to cookies, it's what made Knott's Famous. Every boysenberry in the world can trace its roots to Knott's Berry Farm. Next up, the Farm Bakery and this enticing display case of gorgeous baked goods. Now we get to the meat of the matter, Cordelia Knott's Famous Fried Chicken. There is a chicken-to-go walk-up counter and a sit-down restaurant. The seating is currently outdoors, but it is full service. The family recipe with all the trimmings. And the last shop around the corner was our favorite called Virginia's Gift Shop. It has two huge walls full of history and priceless vintage photographs of the story of Knott's. The first proprietor was the Knott's daughter, whose name was, you guessed it, Virginia. This is the main entrance to Knott's Berry Farm. For this occasion, they were doing temperature screenings and checking bags on your way into the park. The fall theming was really spectacular as soon as you walk in the place and seeing the guests in costume made it even more festive. Knott's Berry Farm has four distinct themed areas. Let's take a walk and explore the park. This is the heart of the park and Walter Knott's passion project, Ghost Town. Ghost Town is an 1880s Old West boomtown that debuted behind the Chicken Dinner Restaurant way back in 1941. The buildings were new construction but treated to appear aged and authentic. The only exception is the blacksmith shop. This is a vintage structure moved to knots from a neighboring farm. Hello. Oh. What were you making? It'll be a nail when it's done. Thank you. Ghost Town grew during the 1950s, including the addition of this historic train shipped from Colorado and the authentic one-room schoolhouse. This authentic one-room schoolhouse from Mitchell County, Kansas, was moved to Ghost Town at Knott's Berry Farm in 1952. Here comes your grape. Now hold on, because I'm going to throw in the deluxe for free, okay? Are you 
The atmosphere in Ghost Town was our favorite. As were these fellows, two horses in the barn, retired now and loving the attention of the crowds. The groom told us there are 45 horses at Knott's currently stabled across the street, and they are ready to jump back into action as soon as they are allowed. This area is called Fiesta Village, and it is all about celebrating California's Spanish roots. It originally opened in 1969 with Mexican-influenced art, architecture, and food, and the whole place feels like one big party. In fact, we loved it so much we had to visit in both daylight and darkness. There is a Day of the Dead theme going on right now for Halloween, and it just adds to the crazy color and appeal of Fiesta Village. When the park is open, there are several coasters and thrill rides in this area. This one, the Jaguar, is a three-minute-long coaster ride through the mysterious Mayan temple. And I'll tell you what, it sure drew our attention. Fiesta Village is also home to these beautiful models of the California missions. In the 50s, Walter Knott hired set designer and artist Leon Bayer de Volo to create scale models of the 21 missions that had been built by Franciscan monks all along the coast. After decades of being on display in these huge windows, the models were removed and put in storage. But in 2013, Knott's management launched a project to restore them and put them back by popular demand. The park's wood craftsman, Bob Weir, set up shop in Ghost Town and restored all of them in public view. He even rebuilt five from scratch. Absolutely incredible work. If you're interested in more detail, we'll put a link in the description box to the full story on the mission models. If Fiesta Village pays homage to the state's past, the boardwalk is all about what we associate with Southern California today the classic beach lifestyle. It also has a classic theme park feel with its midway games, food choices, and of course, coasters and thrill rides as a backdrop. Serious theme park fans, Boardwalk is definitely your spot to go. Camp Snoopy is the last of the four areas within the park, and this six-acre playland was the first ever theme park area designed just for kids. We didn't go through it during our visit, but they were featuring a trick-or-treat event with candy stations for Halloween. Camp Snoopy arrived in the 1980s, and it's all about Snoopy and the Peanuts gang. You know, the beloved characters made famous by Charles Schultz. From late September until November 1st, the Taste of Halloween event is an outdoor dining and retail experience that celebrates the most fun holiday, Halloween. The park is decorated for the fall season with beautiful arrangements of pumpkins, gourds, flowers, and corn stalks. This gorgeous display is right at the main entrance and we had to capture it in all its glory after dark. Guests are encouraged to come in costume and you've seen a lot of that in our wanderings today. There are spooky characters sprinkled around the park who interact with you and add to the atmosphere, as well as talented performers along the midways. The Halloween event is priced at $35 for a tasting card, which entitles you to five food and drink specials and special Halloween-themed snacks from Knott's executive chef, Bobby Obezo. 
All right, the music was kind of loud here, so I'm going to translate what Paula is saying here. She got cheeseburger macaroni with bacon. With bacon. And I tried a small glass of boysenberry beer. Yes, I said boysenberry beer, and you know what? It was delicious. It's really good. It's really good. The area where we are sitting is the largest seating area in the park adjacent to the main stage. Just check out the magic show happening every 90 minutes. Taste of Halloween is a blast, but we do have some bad news. It is totally sold out for the rest of the 2020 season. Now, one fun piece of trivia. The Halloween haunt at Knott's started in 1973, and that event became Knott's Scary Farm in normal years. The largest Halloween event in the world. Hi. Hi. We're having a great time. A ghoulish time? A ghoulish great crack time. I hope so. We need no spirit okay? Okay, Paula, what about that place? Was that amazing or what? We had a great time. I just have one beef. What's How that? can I be at a Cedar Fair property <laughs> and I can't go on the coasters? Come on! I'll tell you what, this girl loves coasters. We used to go to Cedar Point and Sandusky every year for their opening, didn't we? We did, and we would often go to Hello Weekends as well. We're just big Cedar Fair fans. <laughs> but we had a terrific time here. This is only our second time at Knott's Berry Farm. Ever, uh, yeah. Yeah, the people were terrific, were they not? Just lovely people that work here. Um, everything is spotless, clean, and uh, it was just, it was a fiesta. We just really had a good time. And uh, th that food was great too. Yes, yeah, interesting food choices and drinks as well. The uh, blood lemonade or whatever it was, that was that was good. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this one. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Follow us on our social media accounts and... Uh, we love your comments. We love that you watch us. It's just such a thrill when you write and say, you know, we spend our Sunday mornings or our Sunday evenings with Dale and Paula. That just warms our hearts. <laughs> we hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, bye everyone. Bye, everybody. Durango! Paul! 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 Paul. What? Uh, How did you get here? I, I hitched a ride and I got a Greyhound bus, but I, I heard you was coming to Knott's Bay Farm. You never told me you was coming here. And you know what they have here? They have pie, and you got it in your hand, and you was going to eat it, wasn't you? You're a stalker. I'm not a stalker. I just like pie. <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake, have some pie. It's boysenberry. All They're right. famous for it. Okay, I'm going to eat this pie now. Do you need a ride back to Vegas? No, I, I can't. You see, I, I, I met a girl. I, I met a girl oh. when I was on the Greyhound bus. That's a little she's, scary. She's coming here to Knott's Berry Farm. You know what she does? What? She makes pie. I got to go meet her now. See you later, Paul. Bye-bye. <laughs>